All right, everybody, it's Camper back here again, and now it is time for the final part of my post Appalachian Trail through hike gear review, and that's going to be everything else that I haven't talked about, all my miscellaneous gear. So let's jump right into it, folks. I can't do nothing better than spending my day with you. My life's sunny and better, girl, when I'm with you. She luminous so bright like a star in the skylines. She got the looks, the good, oh boy, I need a fan in my life. Shawty, where you wanna go, 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 go? London, Paris, Tokyo, oh, shawty, we could go. Don't need no luggage, na 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 na. Don't need no stress, girl, na 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 na. Just me and your sons are right, sons are right, girl. I want nobody but you. 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 First, I'm going to talk about the electronics that I used. As you can see, I'm filming this with my iPhone 10. I not only use this to film videos, I use it to take all of my pictures. I used it uh, to edit all my videos. And uh, I, for my editing software, I used KineMaster. And um, I also, of course, use it to make phone calls, use it for the Gut Hook app or whatever other app I uh, needed. It was my music. Um, everything. I would just put the earplugs in and I could listen to my music as I went. And I had Spotify, so I had an app called Spotify and I had pre-downloaded various soundtracks to listen to. And also so many people, I didn't do it, but I wish I would have, I wish I would have listened to some podcasts. So many people that I hiked around, they listen to podcasts and it kind of helps with the uh, dullness of the day. Now, let's start at it. I had a wall charger. Uh, I had the Anchor Dual Port uh, wall charger pretty lightweight and it comes with the standard cord that you hook into your iPhone right here also it has a smaller cord that I use then to charge my battery charger when I'm in town this is the battery charger it is the insignia 12,000 m mph I believe it is um, but this charged my iPhone up to five times at a hundred percent and the key is keep your iPhone or whatever phone you're using on low battery mode. Uh, and that'll save the battery life of your phone and you need to use this even less. So I definitely recommend the Insignia 12,000. A lot of people use the 15 and the 20,000 and those are great. You never have to worry about any issues with those. They're just a little bigger, a little bulkier. All right, the next thing is, is the uh, Black Diamond headlamp. Um, it's real meaty. Uh, you know, kind of chunky, thick, got a nice, real comfortable band to it. Um, eh, it's one of the very few pieces of gear I didn't love. Um, it uh, took, I believe, five AAA batteries, and I had to replace them three or four times. And so that adds a little extra weight here too. And uh, it, it wasn't as bright as I wanted it to be. And it was sometimes difficult switching back and forth to the different settings. You know, so I really would not recommend the Black Diamond headlamp. What I would recommend is the one that Chit Chat used. Super lightweight, very, very bright light, has different functions and fe features, very easy to switch back and forth. I'm gonna put the link uh, to her headlamp in the description of this video, okay? So that will be my electronics. Uh, my water filtration system, real simple, the Sawyer Squeeze system, comes with uh, the Sawyer Squeeze, a couple water collection bags. Highly, highly recommend it. I cannot really recommend the Sea Knock bag. I used the Sea Knock bag for about a thousand miles and then I got a hole in it and it wasn't my fault. It was around the seal, okay? Because um, I took very good care of my stuff and uh, they have a lifetime warranty and I followed all of the guidelines and the company still would not honor their warranty. So I cannot recommend CNOC. But what I can recommend is 
is the Sawyer bags. They have vastly improved these bags. These bags used to always get leaks in them. These lasted me, I wanna say, 1,500 miles. So no leaks. Definitely recommend the Sawyer water filtration system. All right, going number two. <laughs> I just kept my little going to the bathroom kit in a gallon Ziploc bag. And inside of here, I just have like a, you know, a, a third of a roll of toilet paper I just squish down. And then I have, by the company called Deuce of Spades, a titanium trowel, okay? Super lightweight, less the weight weighs less than an ounce, quickly, uh, even in the winter, can dig a six inch cat hole. All righty. Also, I would keep this in the brain of my pack. Also in the brain of my pack, I would also keep in a Ziploc bag, a gallon Ziploc bag, uh, my AWOL guide. Now, I kept the whole guide. I didn't tear pages out to save a gram because this was also my journal. So I would write down uh, where I was when I started the day, uh, anything significant that happened during the day, and then where I finished my day. Did I stay in a tent, a shelter, a hostel, a hotel? Um, and then, you know, how many miles I did. So I wrote that all down in here on a daily log. Also in here, I had a wallet, just a small lightweight uh, uh, wallet for your stuff. Um, a little small rag to clean my glasses with. And uh, I also had my own Sharpie pen for making uh, notes in shelter logs and et cetera, stuff like that. Um, and little uh, ear toggles for my glasses, okay, so that I wouldn't lose them. Okay, so I think that was pretty important. And also it's kind of comfortable around the ears. So that would be the last thing that I would put in my uh, brain of my bag. All right, next is my toiletries. All standard stuff, don't overthink your toiletries. Don't overpack, don't pack your fears when it comes to this stuff. Um, toothpaste, toothbrush, um, fingernail clippers, uh, Leco P, letter P, Leco P tape. This is great if you feel any hot spots coming on. Again, zero blisters for me. Uh, any cuts, scrapes, abrasions, Leco P. And I recommend this with a little piece of gauze just have some separate gauze thrown in here. Um, because when it comes to sweat, uh, rain, uh, river crossings, this is not gonna come off until you're ready to take it off. And that would be in my toiletry bag. In addition to my toiletry bag, I would have my insect repellent, okay? Now this is by Sawyer, and it's for mosquitoes and ticks. I got this idea from Chit Chat. It works better than a spray, in my opinion, because a lot of times when you're spraying, half the spray goes off around you and not on where you want it. So every morning, it was a morning ritual. I'd get up, I would put this on myself, and I never had issues with ticks or mosquitoes. The mosquitoes and gnats are going crazy. So, yes, the old bug net is in full force. All right, next I have my pack uh, rain cover. Um, this is by Osprey, and make sure you get the same size as your pack. I have a size large Osprey Atmos AG65. This is a size large. Never had any issues with this baby. Worked the whole through hike. Uh, something I forgot to mention on my last video in the sleep system was my pillow, so I'm gonna mention it now. Okay, this is the uh, Thermarest size small foam pillow really crunches up very small i i tried to like the blow up pillows because they're so light i just couldn't sleep well in it i slept like a baby with this pillow i highly recommend it next i have a thermarest z seat just what it is folks keeps your pants clean anytime you take a break put it on a log on a rock on the ground it not only keeps your pants clean make sure you don't get holes in them um, I'd also put this down in front of my tent right before I got in so I could put my knees on them and I wouldn't track extra stuff into my tent. All right, now on to my umbrella. I got this umbrella. Um, this is actually my second umbrella because I lost my first one. Um, my first umbrella, which I absolutely loved, I bought it from Z-Packs and I think I paid 60 bucks for it, but it's an ultra light backpacking umbrella. This is very, very similar to it. Uh, it's an off-brand company, and uh, I highly recommend a uh, lightweight backpacking umbrella. 
because man, it just makes your day more, I don't know, reasonable, more tolerable when it's raining. Um, it takes longer for you to get wet. You still will get wet, but it takes a lot longer and it will keep the water off your face and your eyes and, and you know, this area of your body. So I decorate, you know, you can, you can just set it right in the side of your pack, easy. Um, so, and, and it weighs eight ounces. So I definitely recommend the lightweight hiking umbrella. Okay, moving on to, I carry two one liter bottles of, I would just buy a smart water bottle about maybe the, every third time I was in town, I'd replace them. And I always bought the one liter size because I just didn't want to take a chance of not having enough water. They're very convenient. I had one always right here on my shoulder strap of my uh, backpack in, in a Z-Pax water bottle holder. And then I would have one on a side pocket of my backpack. Now, in addition, I always carried an empty uh, 32 ounce Gatorade bottle. Now, this is for guys that are between the ages of 40 and 70. <laughs> I would use this in my tent um, if I had to go number one in the middle of the night and it was really cold or rainy and I didn't want to, you know, get up out of my bag and, and put on my shoes and try, you know, go outside and try not to disturb people around you to relieve yourself. I would just go in this bottle right inside of my tent and then in the morning, very discreetly, I would empty out the contents and uh, I'd be good to go. And it, I would put this on the outside of my tent uh, in one of the pockets. So super lightweight, and let me tell you what, very valuable item. Okie doke, now I'm gonna talk to you guys about my favorite item. And that is my Black Diamond L Pine Carbon Cork Handled Trekking Poles. Outstanding product. Look at these meaty metal clasps here to change the height whenever you need it and also to tighten them up. Never, You'll never have an issue of them breaking. Uh, I went through, I actually switched these out when I got to New Hampshire because I went to REI one day anyways. And so I thought, hey, I've had these less than a year and the cork handle part right at the bottom started to, to tear off. And it's just because of your, the sweat from your hands every single day and you're getting these wet and then they dry, wet, dry, wet, dry, you know, rinse and repeat basically. And that cork eventually starts to chip off. Now I just put tape over and it was fine. But seeing I was in REI and I thought, you know what? They're gonna give me a brand new pair. And that also will give me brand new tips to go in New Hampshire and Maine. And boy, that was valuable. So I absolutely could not recommend these more. My favorite piece of gear. And that is the Black Diamond Alpine Carbon Trekking Poles. All right, next is gonna be my food bag. I have the Z-Pax Food Bag Bear Kit. And that bear kit comes with your food bag, bear line, a carabiner, and a rock bag. This lasted the whole way. Absolutely love this entire kit. It's ready for another through hike. Now, also inside of here, I have, I would always put my cooking kit. My cooking kit is, I have, let's see, um, a titanium, Spoon. I like the spoon better than the spork, and it's made by Optimus. It weighs like an ounce. And then also my uh, Tokes titanium 750 milliliter cooking pot with handles and lid. And I just use this uh, rubber band to keep it closed. Inside of here, I have my MSR Pocket Rocket 2 started up every time, lasted the whole through hike. A large big lighter. I didn't mess around with a small big lighter. One large big lighter lasted the entire three hours. Then I have my, uh, I have a bandana here as my camp towel, you know, for cooking. And also a small can of fuel. I always carry just a small can. This small can, because I didn't make breakfast, so I didn't make coffee in the morning or heat up oatmeal. Yeah. I would only use this once a day to boil water for my dinner. And so one of these small cans would last me, oh, about three weeks. That's pretty good. And so what I would do though, because you're always setting 
it down on something that's damp, whether it's the picnic table or rock or the ground. I would always take my camp, you know, my bandana first, put it down, and then I would turn this upside down so it would store better and also allow me to put the rest of my stuff in there. And you just push it down like this. Now what that does is, besides give you more room to put the rest of your stuff in here, it also keeps uh, the, the metal from the can from rusting and rusting the inside of your pot. So then I would just put my lighter, my stove, my lid, and then wrap it up with a large size rubber band. Done. So that's it in a nutshell, folks. That's, uh, that's all of my gear that I used on my Appalachian Trail through hike. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, one other thing I did want to mention, I can't remember if I mentioned this yet, but I know I talked about it in one of my other videos, is how I switched for 800 miles my packs. This is, I just wanted to show you, this is the uh, Granite Gear Crown 2 backpack. Um, kind of thin shoulder straps. The uh, load lifters are, you know, not the easiest to access and they don't really work that well. It only weighs two pounds, but honestly, when you got all your gear in there, it felt heavier than my four pound pack. So I do not recommend the Granite Gear Crown 2 for a through hike, but if you're just doing a weekend back at backpacking trip, it's fine. All right, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well and everybody's happy and safe. And I will see you down trail. That's a very unique piece of gear, PTO, and seems like it could really come in handy with the reaching around so I can go as much and all that, so let's send this on over to... All right, and here is the Blood Mountain Shelter. My goodness. I've waited a long time to come in here. Well, standing Indian Mountain, mad respect. Woo! Over 5,000 feet, that took us two hours. Sunrise in the mountains of Georgia. It doesn't get much better. All right, Pickleball signing the Lazy Hiker 2020 Appalachian Trail banner. Yeah. Let's start in mid-February on the Appalachian Trail so we can uh, we can have better views. <laughs> better views at the top because the foliage, because <laughs> the foliage hasn't grown in. We'll avoid the crowds. <laughs> All right, just come across the, our only water source for like the next eight miles. And as you can see, that screwball's better half facing me there. All right, time to put this permit back where it belongs. Gun with the Smoky Mountains. Right where we came from.
Appalachian Trail. We have cows and steers. I'm Nick Meadows from Milton, West Virginia, but everyone calls me Poncho. Last but not least, how am I going to be the ultimate survivor? I'm going to lay low and bite when I need to, like a chihuahua. Hey buddy, how's it going? Just chilling? I do have a question for you though. Can you really save me 15% in just 15 minutes? <laughs> Way to go, chit chat! All right, my first dinner of the day. From the wayside here, I got uh, some junior mints for dessert. Uh, some barbecue chips, a Pepsi and a Gatorade, and a hickory smoked white turkey and cheese with a little bit of mustard and mayo. snack at the Lake of the Hout, uh, Lake of the Cloud Hut. What are you having, Tom? Cookie. A cookie bar? All right. Okay. New Hampshire, Maine, state line, state number 14. Let me get over here. Okay, I'm officially in Maine. Woo! This is where the pain ends, right? Yeah. Lobster. And what's the town? Wiscasset. Wiscasset? Maine. There you go. And of course we have <laughs> Frosty. 